Hey, how's it going? Been a long time since the last video. I've been really sick. I still am sick. And in fact, speaking of that, you need to see my face. Doink. But I wanted to make a video anyway, so let's do a real chill one. Today I'm just gonna write a song in MIDI, and while we do it, hopefully you'll pick up on a bunch of tips. So I got a track here which I think I'm gonna start writing from. It sounds like this. Pretty nice sounding. This is from the Lab Steel Library from Spitfire Audio's Labs. This is a free MIDI instrument library, so I highly recommend you download it. Lots of nice sounds on there. They're not just like really clean sounding libraries. They got, you know, lots of character to them. So I guess that's tip number one. Get Spitfire Audio Labs. All right, so the first tip I have for you is to go to your mouse modifiers and go to track and left drag. And I have changed a few of the modifiers here, but I have command set to draw an empty MIDI item. So... Wherever I want to start my MIDI composition on any of these tracks, I can just hold command and I can draw a thing. And this is an empty MIDI item that I can open in my editor. And then I can double click this item to open my MIDI editor window. I'm gonna make this real nice and big and I'm gonna zoom into the beginning here and let's draw our first chord. So if you don't know music theory and you don't know your keys and stuff, there's a tool here that can help you and that's the key snap feature here. So if I hit it, I can, for example, select the key of C major. And then as you can see, everything is kind of grayed out with some things being yellow. So the yellows are our roots and I can, for example, draw a note here. But if I try to draw a note that's outside the key of C major, for example, this black key right here, it's just gonna automatically snap it to the next available note, which is pretty useful. So key snap can help, but it's pretty easy to also just do without or do the key snapping later. So what I'm gonna do is write a C, and if I want to play a fifth from the C, um, I have a custom action for this, which I use option, shift, and five to trigger, and that's x frame duplicate selected notes as fifth. Um, there's also duplicate selected notes as fifth and octave triads, so that just creates a power chord for you. And once you have a root and a fifth, it's pretty easy. If you want to make a minor chord, you go three semitones above the root, and you'll have a minor chord. And if you go four semitones above the root, you'll have a major chord. And again, from here, if I hit option shift and five, I'll make another fifth. So if you have a major or minor chord and you play another fifth on top of the third degree, you'll get a seventh chord and it sounds like this. Kind of a nice jazzy sound to it. So the next step is you should space out your chords. So all of these chords are now in the span of one single octave. So kind of that frequency region is going to get really congested and then everywhere else is just going to be kind of like lacking, right? And also for each of these voices to move is going to be harder if they're all within the same octave because for example, from this G, we can only go to an A or an F and then we're at the next note. And the same thing with it, with this E, we can go to an F, we can go to a D, but we can't really go like tons of different places, right? But if I space these out, then I can move each individual voice or each individual note in my chord, both in kind of stepwise motion, but also making big leaps. So again, I have a hotkey for that and that's option and numpad eight. So option and numpad two and eight, move things up and down an octave. So let's just put them on two octaves above and now they sound like this. So it's the same chord, it's the same exact notes, but it's a little more kind of like open. And if I want, I can grab all of these and I can drag them out a little bit. But in this case, I think I want to make them an arpeggio. So if you want to make these an arpeggio, it's really easy. What you can do is um, these are default hotkeys. You can move notes around with your numpad so with eight and two, you can go up and down. And with six and four, you can go left and right. So I can grab these, go six, then grab this two one more time, and then do that, and I'll get an arpeggio. But another thing you can do is to go to your mouse modifiers and go to MIDI note and go to left drag. And there's a lot of unassigned uh, mouse modifiers here. One that I have set to shift command control is stretch note positions, ignoring snap arpeggiate. So the way that works is I grab a bunch of notes and I hold the mouse modifier. My icon changes into this little thing that you see right there. And then I can grab it 
and I can just move them like this. I'll grab all of them and I'll do this. Kind of get them roughly to the grid lines and then I just hit Q and they are quantized. So now it sounds like... Now if I want to copy these over, well, there's a few ways of doing that. By default, you can hold command and you can just copy the notes over like this. Then I can just grab both of them and copy it like this. But as you can see, you're kind of prone to errors that way. And it may be a little bit slow, especially if your passage is really big, right? So another thing you can do is just go command and C, place your cursor here, command and V. That's all right. My favorite way is using a custom action. So I just hit the custom action and the passage is repeated over and over again. So let's have a look at that custom action real quick. So it's called duplicate passage. And when I press it, I usually have something selected. So it just first copies that. It moves the edit cursor to the end of the selected events and then it pastes them right there. Um, and I have this set to V. So just to demonstrate, I can grab these and I can go V, 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 V. That's how you do that. Um, in fact, something I want to do is to make this kind of be an up and down arpeggio. So let's just do that and erase these. So let's just hit V one more time and one more time. And let's get rid of this bit and let's grab this whole bit. And when you have a full measure that you want to copy over, you can also use the Reaper default command in D. So now it sounds like this. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, let's copy it over one more time. One more time, Command and D. And now I can select these bottom two voices and let's just bring them up to E. Then I'm gonna just one more time duplicate this whole passage and bring them up to G. So nothing too, too complicated. We're actually kind of roughly in the key of E minor rather than C major if you think about it, but whatever, let's not think about that too much. So let's hear it so far. And then if I want, I can grab this whole thing and I can command and D it to repeat it twice. Then one more time, let's select all the notes and let's humanize this a little bit. So with a bunch of notes selected, you can press H to bring up the humanize menu. And you can adjust the timing, but you can also just adjust the velocity. And as you can see, since our starting velocity is 127, we're only kind of seeing very little variation. Most of them are staying at 127. And the reason for that is that velocity is randomized up or down, and there's no way to go but down from here. So what I can do is bring down the velocity. And for that, I'm using G, Y, U, and I as I have mentioned many, many times before. So I brought them down to 87. And as we can see now, if I play with velocity, they go up or down and we get a lot more kind of humanness out of them. Maybe let's stick to 50%. I'm not gonna play with the timing. Hit okay. So that's definitely all right. It's sounding a lot more human, but we can also get a little bit more control over this because yes, I do want my notes to be at a random velocity rather than at the same velocity, but I still want, for example, every note at the top of every measure to be played harder. So for that, I'm going to press F to bring up the filter events menu. So we've done a tutorial on this before, so I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. Looking to filter for an event type, I want to find the first note of every measure. So I'm going to choose note from the event type, and then I'm going to filter by position in measure. Um, so I want it to be at the start of the measure. So I'm going to choose nothing over here, and I'm going to just choose the smallest value here. And then I go set selection. And as you can see, that already chose my first note of every measure. So that's an easy way of selecting every note from the beginning of the measure. And then I'll just close this and I can use my Y hotkey to make these a little stronger. I also want this note, which is on the four of every measure. I want that a little bit stronger as well. So one more time, let's go to filter. We're still filtering by note. Now, if you want to select a very specific note, like we wanted to select this note from every measure, well, 
there are 16 sixteenths in every measure. This is number 12, right? Where we're going to go position and measure again. And here I can kind of like do the math on where that will fall. Or another thing I can do is just express this number in fractions. So 12 sixteenth, 12 sixteenth, set the selection. And now we can see that exactly that note is selected from every measure. If I go, for example, 13 16 to 13 16 and set the selection, that will be the next note. But anyway, I want a 12 16, 12 16, set that selection, close this window, and I can add a little bit to the velocity of those. So let's hear that. <laughs> Now another thing we can do with the humanized window that I like doing is to experiment with the timing but change the timing to such an amount that it will actually change the groove. So I can set the timing to change for example 100% and here we can also specify a timing bias. So do we want most of the notes to fall early or do we want most of the notes to fall late? Um, so let's maybe give it a bias of minus 50%, something like that. And if I don't like the way this looks, I can just go new random seed. So this looks all right for some reason. Let's hit OK. And now our notes are really jumbled up. But what I can do, for example, is maybe go to a 1 8 triplet and then re-quantize these. So now this will create a totally new groove. So let's hear it. It may not sound great. Let's check it out. <laughs> Let's just use a straight eighth again and quantize one more time. So that's kind of fun. So one thing we can do, for example, is we can duplicate this track and we get two of them like this. And then I can go and humanize each one a little differently. So let's maybe do that and humanize it like this. And here's another tip. You can click this icon in your MIDI toolbar, which is the track list icon, and I hit it and I get a track list right here. This will show me every track in my project that has a MIDI item on it. Right now, that's just two tracks. So I can just hit this and that will take me to my other item down below. So as you can see, they're both the same, but now I'm at the item below. I can see a faint outline of the other MIDI item below it, but I can hit this I and that will go away. But let's keep that here. So let's humanize this once again. And maybe this time the timing bias, we're going to make it, I don't know, later, maybe 31% late. And then let's quantize this as well. And now let's even maybe pan this one kind of the opposite way. So I'm going to go 50% right and 50% left. We're going to have basically the same passage, but they're going to have different velocities and they're going to have kind of like different timings. Since we quantize them, we can rehumanize them again, but this time with just a very small amount of timing differential, just like under 10%, maybe just 5%. And the timing bias, let's just be a little late on them. So I hit OK. Let's go to my next one. Same thing. Just humanize it by 5%, maybe this time be 2% early. And now we have a doubled MIDI passage. So let's hear this. So I think let's stop it there. Those are just some general MIDI tips. We're going to do more of these until I'm feeling better and I can do proper videos. Let me know if you found these useful. I mean, I can always do them <laughs> even when I'm not sick. So let me know in the comments how you like this. I want to do it in a live stream, but nobody watches my live stream. So let me know if you found this useful. I'll make a bunch of tutorials out of this one song. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you very soon. Bye bye.